Hey everybody, John here. Today we're going to be going over a very important topic, and this is called freezing a track or consolidating a track, depending on your terminology. And this is basically the process of converting MIDI data to an audio file that you can either send to somebody else who doesn't have the same settings or doesn't have the same programs as you and you can just send them an audio file to work with or if your computer's kind of bogging down and you want to take all those plugins that are making all these calculations and all that to an audio track to play back which is much easier for a computer to do especially if you have a lot of stuff going if you have multiple instances of contact or serum a shitload of synths or who knows what you got going on in there I don't know but if it's too much and your computer's bogging down, it might be a good idea to go through and maybe freeze some of them, if not all of them, and have your session have a little bit more power. So anywho, I've brought up Harmer here, and I've brought up an old patch I made called Hawaii Pluck a long time ago. And basically, let's record something here into the playlist as far as MIDI data, and let's get this process started. So I'm going to hit the record button, or you can hit R on your keyboard. Either way you want to go about it, and I have mine already selected on notes and nothing else. So let's record a little little something something. So nothing too crazy, uh, just a little little lick there. So right now what you see here is pattern one. Let's middle click that pattern and rename it to pluck just to do our due diligence. So we have this section here in our playlist and this is not audio. This is MIDI data and this is basically in a set of instructions telling a sound generator what to play. So it's not audio. So our process now is to make that into audio. So what you want to do here if you select your pattern here that you place and you right click the track it's on go all the way down here to consolidate this track and here you're going to be greeted with two amazing menus so from track star is basically going to tell where in the timeline is this going to be happening so if you select from track start let's say for example your patterns over here right so you have this pattern selected you got to consolidate this track and you just want to take this chunk here so you just would select from track start and it's basically just going to record that section. Now if you wanted to have it from the track from the song start, that's where this menu comes in. And this is more so for if someone has a session maybe somewhere else and you're throwing something into it and they've given you a stereo mix to record something to, then you already know the the length of their song, so it's best to give them a file. This is from the start of the song, so then they can just get it from you load it into their session at the beginning and not have to worry about where to place it in their timeline. So it helps out along the pipeline if that's what you're doing. So let's bring this back over here and let's select our our plug here and start this consolidation process. So for us in this situation from the track start and the song starts essentially the same place. But let's do song start. And we're greeted with this menu that you should already be familiar with from exporting your songs already. And I have a selected here in Wave. You don't want to go MP3 because it's just you're gonna lose some quality there. Your quality here on the resampling might be 32 or 16. I'm not sure what the default is. I've always had mine at but uh, 512. It'll take longer. However, you want to wait. Let's be patient and have a better product at the end. And HQ for all plugins because you're gonna be recording this. And also down here is something to take note of. So this enable insert effects make sure you know where your file is going before you make this choice. So the reason I say that is, let's say I have this Harmer, right? If you, we have this thing going on, let's bring this down a little bit. I'm like, this is cool, but I wanna add something like a distortion here, a little little blood overdrive on it. I wanna make it a little nasty, put some hair on it, right? So hopefully you can hear the difference of it now. So there's some distortion on it. And let's say that's a sound we're going for. So let's right click this, let's go to consolidate this track, and let's do from song start. So if, if I'm keeping this file inside my session and I just wanna save CPU, keep it off. If you're giving this to somebody else that doesn't have your stuff, click that on. That way all the processes, or the processing that you put this sound through, it's gonna be printed onto that audio. So they just load an audio file how you want it to sound. 
So for this case, I'm going to leave this off for this demonstration, and let's hit start. So it does this thing, it's rendering, it's only eight bars, it's not going to take very long, and kaboom, it's, it's done. And what you'll see up here in this timeline is that the MIDI that I recorded earlier is automatically muted and grouped to the audio that we just recorded from, or recorded to. So if you scroll this down, now you can see this is actually an audio file. And the reason I said to keep this off is over here you're going to be greeted with your audio file, like you have all your other samples in your session. So let's route this back down to five where we had it originally, and now it's an undistorted sound because we left off the inserts and it's going back into this. So if I were to have left that button on, that audio would have had that distortion already on it, and then I'd run it back through this track and it'd have distortion again. So that's why if you're keeping it in your session, leave that setting off and then run it back through your, through your plugin. But if you also want to save more CPU and you want to go even crazier down that rabbit hole, then print the audio effects on it and then route it back and just turn off your effects on your left hand side. You could do that too, but the downside, if you want to tweak your effects a little bit, you're kind of stuck and you'd have to re-render that file again. So that's the only reason I say to keep it off. But it again, it's up to you. It, it all depends on what you're working on and how much stuff you got going, what's your computer like. So those are the choices you're going to have to weigh for that. So hopefully this video kind of demystified or maybe shed some light on this process. Highly recommend to do if you got a lot of stuff in your session or at the very end, if you have a song and you have it finished and there's a lot of different MIDI fi files and data that you, you have in the song, there's a lot of weird synths you've downloaded from who knows where, and the song is completed and you want to save this and maybe give it to somebody or back it up in the best way possible, what you could do is maybe spend a little time and do this process for all your tracks and then export those as stems, or you could essentially record all that audio like I just did, but instead of exporting as stems, you can export as a zip loop package. And that here is file, export, zip loop package. So this will basically save your session, your session file, your FLP, and all the audio files that you have printed and used in the session. It's almost like a save copy in if you're familiar with Pro Tools at all. So you could basically record everything to audio and then give it to somebody else and they can load all the audio files either in or if it's somebody else who has FL but they don't have all the plugins that you do, that's another uh, way you can go about it as well. So thank you very much for watching. If there's any questions or comments, concerns you have, drop them down in the comments and I'll do my best hopefully to, to help you out. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.